Hello, everyone. This is Alan Newell and with Touchstone Essentials, and I'm excited to be sharing with you today a recording with Dr. Tracy Holford, PhD, and Winder Lyons as they talk about our Pure Body, Pure Body Extra Zeolite products with Touchstone Essentials. I'd like to welcome everybody to our call. <clears throat> My name is Winder Lyons, and I have Dr. Tracy Holford on the line with us. Tracy is a quadruple PhD, amongst many other degrees. Tracy, why don't you just start by giving us just a, a sense of your background and how you got to this point. Oh, okay. Well, basically, I started off um, with my parents in the um, military intelligence uh, arena. And so I was in military schools from the uh, very early age on. And I was one of those identified as, as being somewhat bright. And so they put me into what's called a fast track program in the school system. <clears throat> uh, as a result, I graduated when I was uh, 13. And I had my first degree by the time I was 15. And, and all this is, is sponsored through the military and Department of Defense. Uh, so it went from there. So I've got my degrees in uh, physics, environmental chemistry, organic, inorganic, and theology. Those are your PhDs. Those are my PhDs. Well, how did this situation occur that you ended up with Touchstone Essentials and, and Eddie Stone in making a zeolite product? Simply put, you know, all my career since I've left the military in the Department of Defense, I worked by word of mouth. And that's how Eddie found me, by word of mouth. And so he called me up and said, you know, I've heard about you and from other people that I know and, and trust and would like you to do this. And he and basically he gave me just one instruction. I want you to do a Zeolite product. I want you to follow the you know the FDA rules and regulations on, on developing this product and how it works. And that's all he said. He didn't give me any other instructions or any other help whatsoever. And he said, I just want a Zeolite product. And he turned me loose. And this is what we come up with today is what we call Pure Body Zeolite. What's now, for those who are unaware of zeolites, give us just a, a little, a, a short bio on zeolite. What is it, and how does it work, and why does it work, and, and, and how is this different than other zeolite products in the world? Okay. Zeolite is basically, you know, the technical term for it is a hydrated aluminum silicate. And it forms when you have volcanic action, whether it's lava or volcanic ash in the right conditions, that meets seawater or ocean water. Now, the conditions have to be exactly correct for this to happen, but it's actually more common than what we think. But that's how zeolite comes into being. You know, the history of zeolite goes back to the early Romans. It goes back, you know, before that, actually. And, and it's a lot of stuff on, you know, about what the Romans did with it, but they used it primarily as a building material. In fact, there are buildings made out of zeolite that are still standing today that the Romans built. But what they did notice and noted in their writings was when they built aqueducts from the zeolite that the water tasted better than the aqueducts that didn't have zeolite. And they didn't call it zeolite, by the way. They thought it was limestone. So it wasn't until <clears throat> you know, much later that a Swedish uh, chemist coined the term zeolite, and he got that from two Greek words, which meant boiling stone. So that was until like 1756, 1757, by a Swedish guy named Kronstadt. At that point, it was a curiosity. It was a, you know, gem collectors and mineralogical people liked it, but they really didn't know what it was. It wasn't until the 1960s, late 50s, early 60s, that the first real studies that people started understanding what zeolite was really going on and what was going on with it. And so that's when the first published studies in the United States happened. Why do you think it tasted better when the water ran over aqueducts that had zeolite? It kept some of the natural organic material that was in the zeolite out of it. You know, it, it drew it out. I mean, out of the water, you mean? Out of the water itself. They used, you know, in those days, they used lake sources. You know, they used ponds. They used whatever they get a hold of. And so they didn't have water treatment plants. They didn't have, you know, all this stuff. And so the what taste of the lake is what you got in your water supply. Uh -huh. And the natural algae and whatever else was in that lake contributing to the taste, that's what you got. 
they just found the zeolite took out some of that, and they didn't understand why. They didn't question it. They just, okay, this is great, and here's what we're going to do. Huh, cool. So, so after the 60s, yep. scientists really started looking at why does this do what it does with water. And, and it, was, it was just, again, a curiosity, but they were like, this is something's here. And zeolite works because it has an interesting cage structure. It's a hydrated aluminum silicate. So it's got aluminum, it's got silica, and it's got a calcium, potassium, sodium, whatever, inside that structure. But where those aluminum structures cross inside this cage structure, it forms a very unique thing in nature, and that's a negative charge. There's very, very, very few minerals in nature that do this. And zeolite's one of them. That negative charge is what gives it its properties to remove heavy metals, to remove some organics, to help us detoxify ourselves in a, in a very simple, you know, very gentle, sane way. So, in other words, if I'm understanding what you're saying is, uh, understanding that, that the zeolites uh, in nature have a natural negative charge that is a function of their structure. It's a function and, of the structure. And now, when, if you break the, that structure, that charge goes away. Okay. So when, when this negatively charged structure is in proximity to a heavy metal, insecticide, pesticide, herbicide, chemicals that have a positive charge, those chemicals are attracted to the zeolite, they stick to the zeolite, and then it, they're ferried out of our body within four to six hours of taking the zeolite. That's correct. You think of it like the, the poles of a magnet. This is opposites attract. You know, we all, we, we all know that the South Pole and North Pole of a magnet will attract each other. Well, since the zeolite is negative and a lot of these pollutants are positive, they will attract each other. So opposites really do attract in this case. Okay. And it's fortunate for us that most of the heavy metal toxins and most of the toxins in our environment are positively charged. Are there any that aren't? There are a lot of a lot of pollutants that are not negatively charged, are positively charged. They and they are not removed. Okay. So what, what would those what would those be? For example, some of the um, PCB, for, for for examples, have a charge on, but some of them don't. Some of the things we've been hearing about in the news with the plastic bottles will not have a charge on them. So not every pollutant and not every um, Pesticide, you know, all that is removed. It is specific to positively charged toxins. Okay, so what happens to the toxins we get that, that have a positive charge that are, or a negative charge that aren't uh, uh, dealt with by zeolite? How does our body deal with those things? In a very short term, if it doesn't recognize it, it encapsulates it into our fat tissue and holds it there. So it just stores it. To it's a storage it. issue. Okay. Now, um, so when you're talking about these the the zeolites and they have they have two functions one they attract or are attracted to positively charged uh, materials and if those materials are small enough like heavy metal or insecticide or whatever they're attracted inside the zeolite is it is the structure um uh, solid is it perforated is it uh, what, describe what a zeolite particle actually looks like. It looks like a honeycomb. It's an open structure. It's very porous. Um, and that being said, in nature, we're not dealing with pure metals. In our body, we're not dealing with pure metals. We're dealing with salts. And so the size of that cage is literally measured in angstroms. It's like four to nine angstroms, which is the size of an individual atom. And these salts are molecules which are much, much larger. But this charge is so strong that it will bring in to itself that material and literally bind it to itself. It's a true ionic binding motion. Now, the salts, by, the, by salts, you mean like, like mercury, cadmium, lead, th those sort of things? Those, those heavy metals are in salt form? They're in a salt form. And that salt is attracted to the zeolite. Does it get inside, or is it too big to get inside? A lot of them are actually too large to get inside, but that charge is so strong, and we're going to get into this a little bit later, too, as far as the size of the material and why that's important. 
is that it, it, it just adheres to that zeolite particle. Now, if you do happen to have a trace amount of, say, free mercury in your system, it most certainly will, will take that inside of itself. That's small enough to do that. But our bodies are pretty unique, and they, they really tend to bind it up in salts and try and get rid of it pretty quickly. I see. Okay. So the, the, the zeolites, it's, it's, it's uh, coursing around our bloodstream, attracting to itself anything that has a positive charge, um, and then it's excreted within four to six hours of our taking it because zeolites will not store anywhere in our body. Now, is that correct? The, the zeolite won't store in the body, and there's been a lot of animal studies and a lot of you know, some you know, people studies as well to back this up. And there's several effects of zeolite, how it captures pollutants and toxins. You know, one is a pure cation effect, where, the, where you have an opposite charge, you know, you have a positive, and that's a cation effect, and it just electrically attracts. Now, there's also now, the this, sandwich effect. Well, now, hold on a second. With the, with the cationic effect, so that people will understand what that means, for, if you have a water softener in your house, you have beads in the softener, and when the water flows over the beads, it will exchange heavy metal, which it comes in with the water, or minerals like uh, calcium, uh, for the salt that is stored on the beads. Now, is, and so in our bodies, what you're saying is, it's the same sort of process, a cationic exchange, and the zeolite is carrying uh, uh, a calcium. It's and, carrying calcium. And we'll, we'll, we'll bump those, the heavy metals or insecticides or chemicals or pesticides, whatever, we'll bump that calcium off of the zeolite and take its place and bind to the zeolite. That's what you mean by a cationic exchange. Correct. In other words, zeolite prefers a stronger bond. It likes really heavy charges. And a lot of these toxins, a lot of these pollutants and heavy metals have a positive 2, positive 3, sometimes a positive 4 charge on them. So they're very, very reactive, and zeolite loves it. It really likes that. So it will give up a calcium with a positive 1, positive 2 in exchange for that lead, for example, at a positive 2, positive 3, sometimes positive 4. Does it keep and just swapping up and trading up for the mo more and more toxic things as it goes? Right. As it goes. So there's a, that's the, the cation effect. Okay. But there's other effects as well we have to talk about, what we call the sandwich effect. So okay. say you have a very large molecule. It's not going to fit inside the zeolite cage. But what happens, there's enough active sites that the zeolite will basically encase that through the surface charges and then transport that out of your system. And we so, call that the you, sandwich effect. So two zeolites would gang up on a big toxin, is that what you're saying? Correct. Two or more, yes. Okay, so they can they can pile in around something really big and haul it off. And haul it off, and your body recognizes that, and it will eliminate that out of your system. How does it get hauled off? Through the lymphatic system or through the, I mean, what's, what's the process? Well, let's talk about that for a little bit because there's two mythologies that we do with the pure body zeolite. You know, we mill this down to 0 0.3 micron. 0 0.3 micron. 0.3. 0 0.3. 0 0.3, okay. And so that's three-tenths of a micron. Three-tenths of a micron. Okay. And we've chosen that size, and this is a 0 0.3 mean average, so there are some particles in there that are larger, and a lot more that are smaller. To be able to let some of these particles go through the colon and the rest be absorbed in the bloodstream. So as we go through this, we understand that there's a larger percentage that will go into the bloodstream, but there's also that part will go in the colon and flush out your colon, because we can't ignore either one of the systems in our, in our healing process. In other words, what you're saying is, if I'm getting this right, when you have, when you have particles that are 0.3 or less, they will absorb and go into the bloodstream and then do their work there. Right. Or if they're larger, 
they won't absorb into the bloodstream. They'll go in through the colon, clean the colon out in that process. Correct. Which is appropriate because we store a lot of toxins in the colon. That is correct. And so we try to do, you know, the best we could with addressing this, and that's the reason we have a 0.3 mean average. Not an absolute, but it's a mean average. All right, so it does both. Okay, got and it. And it does both. And that's that occurs in the small intestine. So as you go in the small intestine, that 0.3 particle, particle or smaller will go through the filii of the small intestine and enter the bloodstream. In the process of going through the filii, you know, it's marked with a enzyme that tells the body once this, you know, once this changes, then we reroute it through the lymphatic system back into the colon and eliminate it, or through the kidneys and eliminate it, whichever is more convenient. So, so in other words, once the zeolite has attracted all of the stuff that it's going to do, it puts out a different signal. The body recognizes that, grabs it, and excretes it. And excretes it on out. That's, that's pretty brilliant. And so it's the wisdom of the body. Wow. And that's the same way that the, and there's very much a large presence, that's the same way that, for example, EDTA chelation works, which is very highly studied. It's the same exact mechanism. Okay. So, so we have a lot of, a lot of effects on this, but there's also one other effect we want to talk about, and that's called the zeta effect. Okay. And once you reduce the particle size down into that 0 0.3, 0 0.1 range, that charge that is normally in a larger particle only at the intersection of the aluminum bonds, at that point, that charge goes throughout the entire particle. How does that happen? Why does that do that? It's one of the... It's all based on surface area. See, when you look at these, these crystals and you look at this structure, there's a lot of empty space in there. And so that, just like you have an air gap, if you have an open in your electrical system where it won't go across, you don't have your lights turn on. If you have an open in your circuit, when you reduce it down smaller and smaller, then it can go through the entire particle. I see. So that zeta effect takes over, and then the entire particle, even though there's still some silica in there, becomes active. And it gives just a much more reactivity to the zeolite, which allows it to be able to attract more heavy metals. Now, you, there's, 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 there's really, as I understand it, two functions of a small zeolite. Now, now typical zeolites that you find on the market other than, than, than pure body, what are, what are the actual particle sizes on average that you find in, in other people's Zeolites. So far, from what I've seen in a real sense, and I've not studied all of them by any stretch, so this isn't an absolute, but I've not seen anybody that's really below 7 micron. So 7.0 as opposed to 0.1 or 0.3. Correct. And what happens when you get a big particle like that? What effect does it have in the body? Well, it goes through the colon, and it does a good job in the colon, but it's not as complete as one would wish. All right, so it, it does it does some good. It's not going to do any harm. Correct. Um, and, unless there's some contaminants attached to it. Now, in nature, as I understand it, zeolites always attract toxins, and that's why, for before human consumption, they need to be cleaned. What well, they need to be cleaned that? for several reasons, and let's go into that just very quickly. Because we're talking about a very natural mineral here. You know, it's been in the ground. It's been, you know, just rainwater, whatever's going through it. And so whatever's there has been attracted. And some of those substances may not hurt the body, but they won't help you. They, they reduce the efficiency of the zeolite by taking up space. So what we do in our process is to go through and remove all the organics. We have a process to remove any metals. And we selectively choose calcium to go back in to satisfy the electrical charge. Because the light will attract whatever, whatever if it's unbalanced. So we want to make sure we know what's in there. So we, we chose calcium. 
And that's bioavailable calcium that our body can use like it would it's, in the It's bioavailable calcium. Okay. Not going to cause it, any problems. It's not going to cause any problems. And I'm going to, is it enough to cure osteoporosis? No, it's not. <laughs> but is it better than, say, sodium for some people? Most certainly. Okay. So that's the reason we chose calcium. All right. But in the sizes we're talking about, and I'm going to go into this a little bit of the surface area, with the larger particle, the vast majority of the, of the active cages are not exposed. And if they're not exposed, they have no way of helping you. So they're just inside the molecule and, and nothing can get to them. And nothing can get to them. Okay. And so one of the reasons we chose the 0 0.3 besides the availability to the body's bloodstream is simply because the smaller the particle, the greater the surface area, the more cages are exposed, and the better chance it has of really helping the body remove those toxins. So the smaller you get, the, you said the more surface area is exposed, meaning more of the internal structure of the zeolite is available. More cages are available for actual working for you. Now, when you when you when you're when you're crushing this uh, rock down to this appropriate size, how do you guard against losing the charge? And also, how do you uh, guard against having a lot of um, trash uh, from the this this process being in your final product? With our process, is you know the first part of the process is a straight milling operation and is, is very standard and we can't avoid that. There's no way to mill it. Milling by me, you you crush it down to a certain yeah, crush size. it down to a certain size, and that's just so we can handle it. Okay. Beyond that point, we have a very proprietary, very exclusive way of reducing the size down, which we can verify, and I'll talk about that here in a second. Yep. Of the size. And it does so without damaging, and we can, we're going to prove this with the SEM analysis, without damaging that cage. And in nobody a, else in the world, no, no one else has this process. You said you said this was exclusive to Touchstone. I believe this is exclusive to Touchstone. Okay. And the reason being is because we're the only ones that are going down to this size. No one else has particles this small. No one else that I know of has particles this small. Okay, perfect. And we chose, and, we, and 0 0.3 was a very conscious decision. I mean, we could take this down to a mean average of 0 0.1. We could take it down into a 0 0.08 mean size. We chose not to do that because we wanted to involve the colon. Okay, okay. But that, that mean size, give you, give you a, a, a correlation here. You know, there's some other people talking about out there on the Internet and about their products. They have about 90 to 100 square feet of surface area inside their products. Okay. And I've seen that number thrown around out there. We have that's about 7,000 square feet of surface area. 7,000? Yes. As opposed to 100? Yeah. Wow. So when you take a look at this, you know, it comes down to, you know, the effectiveness of it and the actual um, what you have working for you. That is the reality of of this product. That, that's a significant amount of difference. That's vast, an um, uh, incredible amount of capacity compared to other things. So let me ask you this. So let's say that somebody has a, a bottle of these drops, just for, for instance, and um, in, in, in our typical way of thinking, more is better. Uh, and so it, it, as Touchstone is recommending, one bottle a month is all that anybody is going to need. But some people are going to say, well, if a, one bottle is good, why, why shouldn't two be better? How, how would yeah, you address that? Unless you have an active condition or active exposure that to something's critical, the reality of the body is it only can do so much at one time. And you know our our methodology here is based on on two very 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 concrete things: that the grass status, the generally recognized as safe status from the Food and Drug Administration, 
is based on three grams a month. That's been studied. It's been proven to be non-toxic, non-harmful as well. And that's based on years of studies and research that that three grams per month is about as, as much as the body can handle without becoming stressed. And that's how come we chose to have three grams, you know, in our bottle for a month. Okay. You can, yeah. if you choose, do more. It may or may not hurt you. That being said, you may do choose to do more, and you have a severe detox reaction because your body's overwhelmed. So uh, yes, okay. You know, we chose to do you know stay within the federal guidelines. And and have that three grams per month because we know that's not going to hurt anyone. Now detox um, for those who are uh, unaware of the ramifications of a too quick detox. Now detox can look like the flu. You can feel like you're you have uh, a flu, a headache, sore throat, dizziness, nausea, diarrhea. If you're not drinking enough water, constipation. I've seen people. It, erupt to the skin with boils or rashes or things. And people are, will say things like, oh, I'm not taking that stuff. It's making me sick. Well, no, in fact, it isn't. It's what's in your body that's not supposed to be there that's trying to get out too quickly that's making you feel bad. That's what you're talking about, right? Correct. And with this system that we have in place with the with the four drops three times a day, that would, I would not ever expect that to happen to anyone. Okay, so so people can, with in, in fairly good confidence, suggest that that four drops three times a day or three drops four times a day um, is a good medium amount that should not cause distress to somebody. But what if it does? What if somebody's really sensitive? How should they handle it? Just back way down and continue. Just, to just take back up half of that and go from there. Okay, and then work their way back up and work their way back up because you know, for example, if you're a farmer. And you've been handling um, aluminum-based or mercury-based pesticides, herbicides all your life. Your load's going to be much higher, and you may have a reaction because your body's so saturated. So we can't okay. say for absolutely sure that a little bit won't cause that. Okay. But unless but you're in that extreme population, that 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 point one of one percent population that has that exposure, you know, then you're not going to have those kind of reactions. Okay. But but it's all it's it, it, it no matter detox never looks good it's always a pain but it's necessary to have vibrant health and it's always manageable. And the way we we set this up is that the detoxification of your body through the zeolite product should be a very gentle, very organic, very natural way, and you really shouldn't feel bad. This should be very gentle. I mean the zeolite itself is very inert, so it itself won't add to or take away from detoxification. So this should be a very gentle experience for people. Okay. It's unfortunate and, with our society today that our continued exposure to environmental toxins necessitates the, the need to keep continuing to detox. Yes, unfortunately. But this done on a daily basis will enable us to maintain a level of health that uh, is not possible with a toxic body. It, 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 that's absolutely true. This was... This will enable people to begin thriving again. Well, I think we're going to stop at this point for this conversation, and uh, Dr. Tracy Holford, and uh, thank you for chatting with me here today. And uh, we'll resume. Uh, we'll, we're going to do a series of, of ongoing conversations about these things. This is the end of the first one. Thank you very much.